For more videos on people's struggles, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Hello and welcome to Around the World in 8 Minutes, a show from People's Dispatch where we bring you stories of resistance and defiance from across the world as the collective strength of the people fights back against the horrors of capitalism and imperialism and strives for a better world. Our first story is from Palestine. Three Palestinian men, all in their 20s and identified as Mahmoud Adel Al-Waleda, Mohammed Samir Al-Taramsi and Mohammed Farid Abu Namus, were killed by Israeli forces in Gaza on Sunday, August 18. In a similar attack last week, Israeli forces had killed four Palestinians. Israel has alleged that the three men killed on Sunday were responsible for firing rockets into Israeli territory on August 17th. The rockets were reportedly fired in response to Israeli raids. However, they were intercepted and did not harm any Israeli citizen or property. Anger has soared among Palestinians following Israel's refusal to honour its commitment to lift the decade-long blockade of Gaza. Recent reckless attempts undertaken by Palestinians to register their protest against the Israeli occupation is attributed to Israel's failure to implement an agreement it had signed with Hamas in May. As per the agreement, Israel was expected to take steps to ease the crippling effects of the over a decade-long blockade of Gaza. Hope generated by this agreement reduced the intensity of the weekly Great March of Return demonstrations that are being carried out since March 2018, demanding the Palestinians' right to return. However, developments over the last couple of weeks have made it clear that any hope of a complete lifting of the siege on Gaza is misplaced. Israel has taken no steps to implement the deal it signed after mediation by the UN and Egypt. On the contrary, in recent weeks, Israel has moved to grant permission for more than 6,000 new settlement units to be built inside the occupied West Bank. Moreover, Palestinian houses have been demolished in Jerusalem. Along with such fresh provocations, there has been a consistent rise of the right wing within Israel, harboring the agenda of capturing religious sites inside Jerusalem, including the Al-Aqsa compound. On the last Eid a few days ago, when thousands of Palestinians gathered to offer prayer at the Al-Aqsa compound, the Israeli military fired tear gas rubber bullets and sound grenades to clear them in a clear violation of their right to worship at the compound. The military action injured 62 Palestinians. There is a growing fear among Palestinians that Israel is trying to change the nature of Al-Aqsa. There has been an increased mobilization of Israeli ultra-right-wing forces that lay claim on the mosque as Jewish. Now we go to Iceland where on August 18, hundreds of Icelanders gathered near what used to be the Okjokul glacier and carried out a symbolic funeral. Commonly called OK, it is the country's first glacier to be completely lost to global warming. The gathering was attended by the country's Prime Minister, Katrin Jakobsdottir, besides a number of climate researchers and concerned citizens. The event was organized to send out a warning that the plight of the OK glacier indicates the harsh conditions that await the world if governments fail to make serious policy decisions to tackle climate change. Following the event, the Prime Minister from the Left Green Movement wrote on Facebook that today we formally say goodbye to the glacier OK, but it is the first Icelandic glacier to disappear in times of climate change. The landscape is certainly still beautiful, but the ego disappears in our eyes knowing what was there before and why it has disappeared. She continued saying that today we are also rising stronger than ever in the fight for nature. We face an unprecedented position. Today is a time of action because of the consequences of disaster relief worldwide. Heat waves, floods, droughts and extreme fluctuations are the manifestations and cause distress and disaster. Former Irish President Mary Robinson, who also attended the event, commented that the symbolic death of a glacier is a warning to us and we need action. According to a NASA Earth Observatory report, in 1901, the glacier Okyokul was estimated to span 15 square miles or 38 square kilometers. Now it has been reduced to less than half a square mile or under one square kilometer. 
Moving on to Mexico, on August 16, thousands of women took to the streets in Mexico City as well as other cities across Mexico against gender-based violence and demanded justice for all its victims. The mobilization was triggered by the surfacing of several cases of rape in the capital committed by police officers. One of the rape victims is a minor. The protesters chanted slogans such as, they don't look after me, they rape me. Feminists held placards with strong messages such as, they are killing us and you are doing nothing. Feminism has not killed anyone, machismo is killing every day. Not one more, not one less, we want to live. Demanding justice is not provocation, etc. According to reports, on July 10th, a 27-year-old homeless woman was raped by two policemen at a hotel in the downtown. On August 3, a 17-year-old girl was raped by four policemen in their patrol car, and another 16-year-old girl was sexually abused on August 8th by a policeman in a museum in the city center. The 17-year-old rape survivor reportedly retracted her denouncement after she learned that her information and details about her case were leaked to the press. Feminists in the country are angered by the indifference shown by the state and its institutions in taking measures to prevent violence against women and LGBTQ people. The cases that have come to light have drawn attention to the glaring contradiction in society that those who are entrusted by the state to protect and serve the population are the ones enacting this horrible violence. In the first half of this year alone, 448 cases of femicide, 1,364 cases of homicide against women, 206 cases of kidnapping, 9,000 cases of rape, and more than 30,000 assault cases have been reported in the country. During the protest, several incidents of property destruction were registered. The windows and ticket machines at a public transportation station were smashed and there was an intense confrontation between the enraged protesters and officials at a police station. Later, fire was set to the police station marking anger against the perpetrators of the latest abhorrent rape cases. Feminist slogans and messages were spray-painted on the walls of various public and government buildings in the capital city. The government of Andres Manuel López Obrador appears to be taking a more restrained response to the feminist protests and has vowed not to violently repress nor prosecute the protesters responsible for the destruction of property. And this is all we have in this episode of Around the World in 8 Minutes. For more such stories and videos, visit our website, peoplesdispatch.org and follow us on Facebook, Twitter and YouTube.